Graveler in Paimon. And Shangling. Ah, uh, greetings, friends. It's been a while. Hey, what brings you here? Has something happened? What's with this great big stone on the ground? Long story. So, just to confirm, I will assume responsibility for handling this stone of unknown origin. Any objections? None here. You know how to get things done, Kitching. As long as it's with you, I can rest easy knowing that it's in safe hands. Mm, should I take this to mean that you doubt the relative safety of leaving this in the hands of the Tianchuan? Huh? Well, for starters, Ketching is the one who's always out running errands, rain or shine. Besides, you don't seem to give a wooden more about this whole thing anyway, so what's it to you? I was merely joking. You, meanwhile, seem only too ready to pounce when an opportunity to publicly lambaste me arises. Even when it means giving our poor mutual friend here the cold shoulder. By no means. You wish to know about the stone, I presume? Then let me invite the great seafarer Captain Beto to tell the story, if she would be so kind. You... Ugh, fine. Well, uh, it's a big one. Right? And such a smooth surface, too. Makes you think there's gotta be a good chunk of jade in there. It was found by a fishing crew, not far off the coast. It must have been underwater for years. So the erosion will be what's given it that smooth finish. Finds like this cannot be kept as private property, and must be submitted to a holder of public office. Placing it into our custody will also give them peace of mind. So, what's inside it? Well, we've hit it with just about every weapon we could get our hands on and haven't managed to even dent it yet. Clearly there's more to it than meets the eye. No weapon could smash it open. Wow. Hyman doesn't think we've ever encountered a stone like that before. Kuching has taken an unusually keen interest in this giant stone, which is why we are leaving the matter in her capable hands. Let's put that aside for a second. Traveler, what brings you here? Were you looking for someone? Actually, we were looking for all of you! We need all hands on deck here! Oh? Hopefully not because there's been some sort of cataclysmic event. No, no, nothing like that. Paimon's just getting carried away. I just wanted to ask everyone about their food preferences. Food preferences? That's a little unexpected. I have rather simple tastes. Precise, pure, smart, and sophisticated. That is all I require. That's your idea of simple, huh? I summed up my culinary requirements in four words. Is that insufficiently simple for you? A few weeks out on the open ocean would fix your flawed definition of simplicity, let me tell you that. What about you, Beto? Me? Ah, uh, if it's freshly cooked and piping hot, that floats my boat. If it's got a little chili pepper in there, too, I'm one very happy captain. Paimon thought you would have said bar food. <laughs> oh, bar food works, too. As for me, it's got to be seafood. Okay, got it. So, seafood, piping hot, and, uh, and that's where I would disagree. Traveler, surely you've heard of golden shrimp balls. Oh my, they're my favorite. You need to wash and devein the shrimp, wrap it in finely sliced potato strips, then deep fry it to perfection. There's no room for cutting corners. They're very precisely put together. They taste pure, the presentation is smart, and the skill needed to cook them is highly sophisticated. It fits Ningguang's forward summary to the letter. Huh. So what you're saying is, for all the frills and trills, good food is all the same at the core? I heartily agree. Golden shrimp balls are a prime example. Their essence lies in combining art and nutrition in a single package. It is a dish of true value. Okay, got it. So Kuching loves golden shrimp balls. Uh, I didn't say that. Did I? <laughs> no, at least not outright. Alrighty! Thanks for all your input! I'll be sure to take it all into consideration. Traveler, Paimon, 
Do you have anything planned after this? Good. I'd like you to help me investigate something. It's about this stone. You picked the right people for the job. We investigate stuff all the time. My thoughts exactly. The Chising has a public duty to deliver our final verdict to the fishermen, but there are also some things I would like to investigate on a personal level. I'm sure you've become acquainted with the general background of the Moonchase Festival. However, I have my own understanding of this festival's roots. My grandfather was a researcher of Liyue's traditions. In his notes, he indicated that there was a deity called the Stove God in ancient Liyue, which people paid tribute to at a certain time of the year. Very few written records make mention of the Stove God, and those that do are notoriously confusing. Some scholars believe that the Stove God was just another title held by the Lord of Geo, but others suggest that this was a different deity altogether. One folktale even claims that the ancients found the Stove God shrine, but there was no statue. Only a huge, smooth slab of stone. Shortly after it was found, the stone was lost in transit, and it hasn't been seen since. This stone here has all the same features, so I suspect it could be the one that went missing all those years ago. After many years of researching ancient texts, my grandfather came to believe that the practice of paying seasonal tribute to the Stove God may be best described as a festival. He called it the Stove God Festival. That would make it the forerunner to the Moon Chase Festival we know today. But this is all just theory and conjecture. To prove any of it, we'd need to start by identifying who the Stove God really was. Now that Rex Lapis has passed on, and Liwa has entered the age of humankind, his successor should continue to respect our nation's culture and traditions, just as he did. That's why I think the responsibility for this situation should fall to me. It's a chance to shed light on our history, revitalize an ancient tradition, and possibly prove my grandfather's hypothesis along the way. With any luck, we'll nail all three in one fell swoop. It was just a couple of days ago that we received this stone. Right after, we decided to use food as the central theme for this year's festival. It makes me wonder. Maybe a divine will is at work behind all of this. Three birds with one stone, huh? That's pretty efficient, even for... C hey, don't worry about that. That sounds super important, so don't mind me. Besides, we're only... <clears throat> Wait a second. I got it! What? Why are you shouting? Kaching, can I tag along for your investigation? Uh huh. Since it's all about the stove god, I might get to learn something useful about cooking along the way. It'll be great inspiration for me in the competition. Please, let me come along. I promise I'll help. If it means that much to you. Okay, I suppose you can come. Really? Yay! Thank you so much! You're the best! <clears throat> Now that that's settled, time to get going. Jingsa Village is said to be home to a lot of historical texts, so I'd like to start by making some inquiries there. All right, then it's off to Jingsa we go! Oh, sincerely, Beidou, you misunderstand me. I have many simple pleasures. I take a stroll through Yujing Terrace and one down by the harbor every single day. Huh. Well, everyone has their way of procrastinating, I guess. Hi, Granny. We need your help with something. Are there any old books around Qingzhou Village? You know, from a really long time ago? Oh, looking for ancient texts are we? Hmm, let me think. There is an old warehouse over there, property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Many books are stored inside, those that they have no room for at home. In fact, their youngest comes over this way to read sometimes. The Feiyun Commerce Guild's youngest? You must be talking about Xingxiu. Hyman didn't know they had a warehouse here. Let's go take a look! Help! Ah, I'm 
being robbed! It came from that direction. Come on! to clean the book warehouse plenty of times before. But this is the first time I've run into these crooks. Are you all right? I am, thanks to all of you. Hey, wait a minute. You're the traveler, aren't you? And you're with... Oh, Lady Kutching. An honor. Truly an honor. We'll try not to take up too much of your time. I understand that this book warehouse is the property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild, could you advise whether we might find any text relating to the Stove God in this collection? Um, the Stove God? Uh, I, I heard that's the Lord of Geo, right? Huh? Really? Yeah. A friend of mine who conducts research mentioned it once before. We use stoves for cooking, and stoves are built from rock. Some people think that the stove is a gift from the Lord of Geo. And that's why they call him the Stove God. Seems logical enough. But do you have any books on the topic? Um, I, uh... I I'm sorry, I'd have to ask the young master about that. Oh, any questions? Please, ask away. Hey, it's Chung Yun and Xin Cho. Hello, one and all. Guys, what are you doing here? I was bored with nothing to do, and thought I'd come out this way for a bit of reading. And then I thought, why not bring Chung Yun along too? <laughs> yes. I'm just along for the ride, really. I see the Yu Hung Kuching is with you. Hmm. Whatever brings you here must surely be a matter of grave importance. Master Xingqiu, if I may be so bold. Do you happen to know if there are any texts on the subject of the Stove God among this collection? Since I personally selected which volumes to store here, I do have some recollection of their contents. If my memory betrays me not, there is one volume among them called Demystifying the Legends of Liyue, which mentions the Stove God. Might I take a look? Certainly. If it pleases my lady, I shall lead the way. Sheng. I will take care of things here. You're free to go about your own business. They're back! So did you find it? Yes, Master Xingqiu has quite an exceptional memory. Demystifying the Legends of Liyue does indeed mention the Stove God. However, it says the following. <clears throat> the body of the dragon wielded a tail that could eclipse the sun, and claws to command fire and teach the ways of wisdom. Receiving the gift bequeathed unto them, humankind cooked food with fire, and thus did they prosper. The body of a dragon? The stories about Rex Lapis say the same thing. That much is true, but this is the only passage in the whole book. If we want to find out more, we'll have to continue our investigation. There's nothing further to discover here. It seems we'll have to look at other options. I come from a long lineage of exorcists, and our family, too, has amassed a number of ancient texts. Now that you mention the Stove God, I seem to recall reading somewhere that this god once appeared at the Guayli Assembly. Of course, I can't say if it's true or not. Books are penned by people. 
All they can do is show what the author was thinking. Everyone's mind is different, so every book on a given topic will give a different account. I apologize that we could not help in a more substantial capacity. Your help thus far is quite ample. Liyue is a vast and rich land. All things that existed here in the past have left their trace. So long as we do not abandon our search, it is sure to bear fruit eventually. Thank you all. We will continue our investigation elsewhere. Oh, hold up! I had a question too. Xinchou, Chongyun, could you tell me what kind of food you like? Food? Oh no. Y you're not thinking of taking part in the masterful chefs, are you? Uh, yeah, I totally am. What's wrong? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Shangling, this is a major event. I beg you, please don't cook anything strange for this competition. What do you mean, strange? <laughs> Mushroom slime stew, to give one example. Okay, fair enough. That dish isn't my most popular. But that's why I'm doing all this research, so I can create some really special dishes to win everyone over. Well, in that case, I like cold food. That's because you can't handle hot and spicy, right? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. My tastes are on the mild side. I prefer gentle dishes with minimal seasoning. Soups and stews, vegetables and broth, seafood or freshwater fish, either boiled or steamed. These kinds of dishes I am most partial to. No surprises from the Guhua Geek. Okay, another mild child. Got it. These are just personal preferences, and everyone's are quite different. Are you sure this eclectic mix of opinions will be of any use? Of course! You're my customers, and putting a smile on customers' faces is my calling as a chef. Though Xiangling's market research blade stabs often into the dark, her heart never strays from the noble path. If anyone can win the hearts and minds with their cooking, it's gotta be someone like Xiang Ling. She's got pure intentions and really cares about the customers. No, where's all this praise coming from? Knock it off, guys. You're embarrassing me. Uh, sorry for holding you all up. That's all I needed to know. Shall we carry on with the investigation now? Over to you, cooking. Where to next? Hmm. So we've learned the stove god allegedly made an appearance at the Guili Assembly. But today that place is largely a wasteland with few traces of human activity. Long Shuen is close by, so let's stop off there on the way over and see what we can find out. Forgive us, for this is where we must part ways. May your journey be a smooth one. Yes, best of luck. If you run into any difficulties, come and find us. We'll be only too glad to help. Let's go! Next stop, Wang Shu In! Wang Shu In is the best place to watch the moon. There's Yan Xiao! Huh? Oh, Traveler! Who are all these people? Introduce Xiangling, Guoba, and Kuching. Kuching? Uh, of the Qixing? She's the, um, the, um. Hi. It's not that. It's. I mean, I'm just your typical commoner. I've never met someone as high up as the Yuhang before in my whole life. Look at that strong body, those powerful hands, and honest eyes. This guy must be a really great chef. So, is there something I can help you with? You've come a long way out to end up at Wangshu Inn. Let me fill you in. Ah, oh, okay. I see. Legends claim that the stove god once appeared at the Guili Assembly. As Wangshu Inn is the oldest extant building in this area, any historical texts from around these parts are likely to have ended up here. Is there a room in this inn for storing books? And if there is, do any of them mention the Stove God? Well, now that you mention it, we do have a fair few ancient texts here. I remember looking through an old recipe book once. I just need to remember where they're all stored. If you are happy to wait here for a few minutes, I'll go have a look right away. Oh, uh, Traveler, 
There's something I need to discuss with you. What is it? We need to pay up or something? What? No, I wouldn't take your money. We're all friends here. I just wanted to ask if you had the time to make a satisfying salad for me. A satisfying salad? What for? Yeah, guy who hangs out on the roof terrace, you know? Good looking fella, not too tall. Shh, don't you think he can hear you? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you know who I mean. The boss told me to take care of him, but this guy, let me tell you, he is one tough nut to crack. He usually turns his nose up at everything that isn't almond tofu. But the boss tells me you once made him a satisfying salad, and it all went down so well. So, I was thinking, could you teach me how to make it too? That way, I'll have something else in my arsenal. Oh, so this is for show! You guys really look after him, huh? Well, that's life, right? You gotta look out for your own people. All right then, wait right here. I'll be just one minute. Clock is ticking! 59, 58... Sorry for the trouble, Traveler. Okay. Here you are. Thank you ever so much. While Kuching's reading her book, let's make that satisfying salad. Xiangling, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'd love to come watch too, but I don't want to get in the way, so I'll just stay here with Kuching. Okay, shall we go then? Go ahead and get started. I'll just watch from over here. I only need to watch you make it once to have it committed to memory. That should do it! All right, thanks for that. I think I've got it now. You got all the steps down, right? Of course. Don't forget, I am the best chef around these parts. Let's go see what Kuching and Xiangling are up to. Kuching, Xiangling, we're back! You finished cooking? Good timing. We finished our reading, too. And? Useful? Or no? Useful. There is a passage concerning the stove god, and it's not what we were expecting. I quote, <clears throat> 60 miles to the northwest is the Gwaili Assembly. Many were settled there, where they hunted in groups, farmed the land, and made their living from what the soil yielded. When the stove god descended, one god became many, all of which were the height of children. As does a star when it descends into the world, so the stove god went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. With fire, the people at last learned to make hot food, and they dined on rice kanji and cooked meat thereafter. This is a radically different account from the one given in demystifying the legends of Liyue, and also a conflicting one. One god became many? Hmm. Does that mean there was more than one stove god? Taking the text at face value, that is what it says. Went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. So did the stove god really go and teach people how to cook firsthand? <laughs> now that's a god who truly cared for their people. So we've got two leads, but they contradict each other. How do we know which one to believe? By continuing our investigation and reserving judgment for now. Thank you for this text, Yanxiao. It's my pleasure, really. Think nothing of it. If anything, I should be thanking the Traveler. Listen, you've helped me an awful lot. Not just today, but in the past, too. I want to make it up to you properly, and as it happens, things are pretty quiet here today. So I'd like to take the chance to treat you all. What do you say? Will you stay for a meal? Wow, he sure sounds confident in his cooking. I like that. Confidence is one of the best ingredients a chef can have. I really want to try his cooking. I say we take him up on his offer. It's hard to refuse a generous offer like that. Yes, I think we can fit this in. Yan Xiao, we await your culinary creations with great anticipation. <laughs> I won't disappoint. Everybody, please be seated! 
You'd think you own the place. I'll sit here with Goba. Lo, lo, lo. Lo, lo. Here we are. That's everything you ordered. <sighs> it all smells amazing. I think I've met my fellow finalist. Strange. I never would have guessed that such a gifted chef worked here. The Sen isn't particularly known for its food. Everyone likes a good meal, whether they're staying the night or just stopping by for a bite. We call it an inn, but the fact is it's much more than that. We have to cater to all aspects of daily life to make this a true home away from home. <sighs> Please enjoy your meal at your leisure. I should get back to work now. Yang Xiao, are you taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs? Uh, huh? Y you too? Yep, I've signed up already, and I've got my eyes on the prize. <laughs> Your cooking's delicious, Yan Xiao. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the final. Ha! Huh. Interesting. All right, I'll see you there. What was that? Some kind of power move? No, it seemed more sportsmanlike than that. Yep, he's a really talented chef. His food was excellent, and it showed he has a level-headed personality. That's the kind of chef that could be a match for me. I haven't had any competitive cooking experience since my cook-off with Brooke in Springvale. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> Boba, what are you doing? No. Oh, no! Goba's eating the... Those were kitchens! How could you steal them while she wasn't looking? Oh... My golden shrimp balls... Huh? You ate every last one? Oh, Goba, we've been through this! When we're with friends, you gotta be on your best behavior, okay? I'm so sorry, Kuching. I promise I'll make it up to you. What's the big deal? We can just get another plate. After all, it's Yan Chao's treat today. It's not the same, though. The moment's gone. Sure, you can eat something else, but you can never go back and change the feeling of despair as your food is snatched away from right under your nose. The dining experience is a trinity of emotion, food, and atmosphere, and you've got to have all three to make it work. I have to say, now that you mention it, that is a very accurate appraisal of the situation. I'm gonna make it up to you, Kaching. Is there anything you want to eat? Anything at all. Whatever it is, I'll make it for you. Hmm. I don't have high hopes for this, but equally I don't want her feeling guilty. Okay, I'll let her do this for me. If you insist, there is one dish that perhaps you could try making for me. It's an old recipe from my grandfather's notes. No problem. May I see it? I'll get it to you when we're back in Liwa Harbor. Traveler, have you finished eating? Before we do anything else, let's head back to Liwa Harbor. I need to fetch something. I need to go home to fetch my grandfather's notes. Let's meet at Wanmin Restaurant later. Great! I'll go get everything ready. Traveler, what about you? Are you gonna do your own thing for a while, or do you want to come in and have a seat? I uh, actually have something to discuss with her. You go ahead. We'll join you later. Okay, gotcha! Traveler, come here for a moment.